Hey everyone, so I'm just going to take you through a quick crash course on how to get started recording VO, specifically narration for audiobooks, using PreSonus Studio One or Studio One Prime, the free version. The free version only has limitations on musical tools and VST support. It has no timeouts, no ads, uh, no limitations on track count or track length. So for what we're going to be doing, recording VO for audiobooks, it's a perfect tool, uh, especially for free. It's a non-destructive DAW, so it's a little better than Audacity, and it's free, so it's better than pretty much all the other non-destructive DAWs. So we're gonna uh, get started here in a sec. This tutorial assumes that you've got your interface set up, the interface software is installed, you got your mic plugged in your interface, you're getting some level on the interface showing, hopefully. You got PreSona Studio One or Studio One Prime installed and have registered it. In all other ways, we're gonna assume you have not started up the program before. So here we go. All right, if you haven't registered your program, it will ask you at this point. Um, even though it's free software, you still have to go on to uh, PreSonus' website and sign up for uh, uh, a license for Studio One Prime. Okay, now here it's gonna ask you how much of Studio One you want installed. We want the minimum because all of these other tools are for music and mixing. So if you're just tracking like we're going to be we want as little installed as possible. And as you see, all it's installing is the manual. It doesn't install any of the audio tools or mixing tools, music tools, any of that. Um, so it's going to be pretty bare bones installation with just the manual. The manual is good to have around uh, because, uh, you know, especially if you're not a Studio One Pro yet, it's good to have around for reference. It's going to want to restart the program. Let's go ahead and let it do that. And now we're here at our start page. It's a pretty uh, basic start page. Um, you're going to want to probably go to create a new song first, but we can actually get a lot done before we do that. We can make sure that the uh, audio interface is correct. Let's click down here where it seems like it's gotten it wrong. And yeah, it's a defaulted to my built-in output and input on my Mac. So DAWs to not even find my professional interface right away. This will differ depending on which interface you're working with, of course, but you should know its name. Go ahead and select it, right? Device block size, I'm going to shrink down to 16 because this uh, affects the input and output lat latency, and especially while we're recording, uh, you want to hear in either your or the artist's ears as um, quick of a uh, uh, playback as possible. So we don't want a huge delay in that. So get this down as low as possible so that the program still runs fine. I've been able to run it fine at 16 samples, but if it crashes on you or whatever, try 32, 64, go from there. Um, there are also some settings we can set up in advanced and then click on audio. We uh, don't need to record tempo information audio files because we're not doing music. We don't need dithering for playback and audio file export, uh, but we do want to turn on pre-record audio input because this makes PreSonus Studio One uh, function more like Pro Tools when Pro Tools has Quick Punch enabled. In that when you're recording with pre-roll, it will be recording even while it's playing back the previous audio. Before it looks to have started recording, it will actually be recording under the hood, which is great so that if you were the talent uh, were to jump the, the, the punch just a bit, you can actually pull it out and uh, get it back, which we'll look at as well. Uh, but that's great. We have every, all the basics for the, for the uh, software set up now, so we can go ahead and hit OK and create a new song. And now we have some more options. We'll give it a name. I'm going to record Wizard of Oz. Uh, sample rate should be 44.1 for all audiobooks. This could be 16 or 24. It's usually 16, but some clients in the audiobook world require 24. So know what you're doing here, but I'm going to default to 16 since that's what we usually do. Bars, we don't want bars at the time base. We want to see seconds on all of our rulers and everything like that. Song length, it asks you for ahead of time, assumedly to allocate those resources. Uh, you want to put in a uh, length that's at least the estimated length of the project, plus maybe another 20%. I found if you type in 1,000 minutes, you get 16 hours and, uh, and 40 minutes, which is long enough for most audiobooks. So that'll be good for our uh, example today. Uh, this seems like it wouldn't matter because we're not me working on music, but it does because in Studio One, you can only set the pre-roll in bars, not seconds. So here's a trick. If we just make the time signature 2-4 instead of 4-4, four, four, um, with one simple edit, we've now made a bar equivalent to one second because two beats of 120 beats per minute equals a second. So when we get into the interface, we'll know that bars mean the same thing as seconds. Pretty good trick there. This doesn't matter because we're working with, uh, we're not doing music, but leave this off because PreSonus Studio One is kind of an interesting DAW in that it allows you to overlap 
audio files, what they call audio events. Um, and if you overlap them and this is on in your session or your um, track, it will play both of those audio events at once while they're overlapped. So that's an interesting tool uh, and a good feature, but not something we'd want to accidentally do while recording. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that off and hit OK. The window that comes up might be a little cluttered. It might even look like this or this when it first comes up. Um, so we want to be mostly working with this. So we're going to want to get rid of these side and bottom windows. As you saw, um, these three buttons in the lower right corner uh, toggle those on and off. So we can just you know get rid of all of them to get the most amount of real estate for uh, recording our audio track going on right there. Um, some more things we want to do. Uh, I'll take a look at this section real quick here because right here we have open marker track. There's no default shortcut to it, but you can go into the preferences and create one. But we'll just click on it real quick because we want to be able to see our marker track uh, as we're making markers. Most of this other stuff you won't have to worry about. That's an inspector to see what's going on with the track you're on. Um, this turns on and off automation view. Uh, this opens the arranger track, which we don't need, and this opens the tempo track, which we don't need, right? So uh, I can also show you uh, these things up here. This is a smart tool. This is what we'll be using for everything. So don't worry about it. If you see it like this, ah, put it back to this. Um, this does everything we need. It can uh, trim and edge uh, uh, events of audio, as they call them, regions of audio. You can move and drag stuff around. You can select ranges. Uh, there's the split tool, but you can split using the smart tool by double clicking. So we don't really need that. There's the eraser tool, but you can erase stuff by clicking with the smart tool and hitting delete. So as you can see, this does pretty much everything we need. It, it encompasses all five of these tools. The paint tools, just for MIDI. Mute tool, we don't need. Listen tool, we also don't need. This is a great little feature, the info view, uh, because if you click on this, you can actually see what things are as your mouse cursor hovers over them, which is kind of helpful, like I said, especially if you're not a pro to Studio One yet. This quantize doesn't come up unless you're working in music. Uh, time base, we already set to seconds. Snap, we probably just want off because it will make things difficult in trying to select exactly where we want to start recording and whatnot because it'll start snapping to stuff. So you could maybe go through this and make it what you want, but I suggest just turning it off with the N key. You can just toggle that off. This is uh, ripple edit mode, which is kind of like Pro Tool Shuffle, but not exactly, because if you take a region and try to slide it into the middle of another region, it won't just snap. It'll actually cut that region in half and put the other end, uh, other half at the end of the region you were sliding. So if you use this, no, it's not exactly like Pro Tool Shuffle. Um, this is auto scroll, which we're probably going to want on. You can toggle it off and on with F if you need to, but I'm going to leave it on because we want to just be following the recording uh, uh, you know, uh, we're, uh, uh, as far as we're, what the screen's looking at, you know? Uh, so cursor edit falls position, we're also going to probably want that on. So in the case you have to make an edit um, to fix something, your playhead cursor will also um, uh, be in that same location. You won't have two cursors in two different locations. And this is how most of us in Pro Tools work as well. That's also an option in Pro Tools. So I say just leave it on. Um, great. Uh, we can create a track. We do that with the T key on the keyboard, and then you can just immediately start typing the name of the track. It gives us input option here, but we don't really know what that is yet. And so I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna show you how we see. Um, right, so this is, this is a good one. I left the automation view on. So uh, that can be easily toggled on and off with A. So if it doesn't look like this, for some reason, probably just hit A on the keyboard and you'll go back to the normal view for tracks, right? So this is what you should be seeing. Um, it says input L, but what is that? I don't know. Let's go to audio IO setup to see. It's taken my input one from my Onyx Firewire and put it into what it calls input L. You could, you know, double click and change the name of that uh, so that you recognize what it is better. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out what, what it called things so that I know what, what I'm doing. So input L is fine, so I'll just use that. Um, and then what that means is that when we arm this track, we should be seeing level. Uh, I'm gonna actually just, instead of clicking there, I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard, which will arm it and turn on monitoring. Great, right? So we have signal and it looks pretty strong. So uh, that, should be, that should be fine. Um, we wanna do a few other things real quick. We wanna turn on pre-roll. Uh, you do that by hitting O on the keyboard, and you'll see that this lit up here. You can also just toggle it on and off here. But if this is red, that means you have pre-roll going. How much pre-roll? Skip ahead to gadgets here, and we have the metronome setup. You can click on that, 
and you can see that right here we have pre-roll selected, but for one bar, and remember, remember we did that trick that one bar equals one second, so we we'll probably want to set this to four or five seconds, whatever you or the talent's um, preference is. So go ahead and shut that down, and then we should be ready to start recording now. I'm just going to uh, make this track a little bigger so that we have a better view of what we're recording. You can also do this with uh, Shift W and E. That'll make your track bigger and smaller, and W and E by themselves will zoom in and out of your session, right? Uh, you get to the, if your cursor somewhere else, you can get to the beginning of the session just by here hitting the period key on your numpad there. You definitely want a numpad uh, to do this. So if you don't have a full size keyboard, I, I, I suggest to get one, right? So we've got this armed, uh, we've got signal going, we've got all our settings the way we want them. We have pre-roll on. We should be ready to start recording. So let's give this a go. I'm gonna pull up my script real quick here and then uh, the keystroke to start recording in uh, Studio One is actually the asterisk key on the numpad, it, an another numpad uh, shortcut. So let's give this a try. Introduction. Folklore, legends, myths, and fairy tales have followed childhood through the ages. For every healthy youngster has a wholesome and instinctive love for stories, fantastic, marvelous, and manifestly unreal. The winged fairies of Grimm and Anderson have brought more happiness to childish hearts. So I don't like how I did childish there, kind of stumbled. I'm not an audiobook reader, if you can't tell. So this is great, so we can see how to punch in with our pre-roll. We just want to select a little after the uh, the last phrase that we got right there. Um, and But what I've noticed with Studio One is that there's maybe just an eighth of a second where it'll cut off the pre-roll that you're listening to. Not completely ideal. So I wouldn't recommend like putting it right there, but more like uh, right there. So uh, let's try punching in from there. Of love for stories, fantastic, marvelous, and manifestly unreal. The winged fairies of Grimm and Anderson have brought more happiness to childish hearts than all other human creations. Well, I kind of biffed it again, but that's fine. So you see, see how that goes. Um, that's pretty much how you punch in with PreSonus Studio One. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about markers. Uh, the default way to create a marker is to just hit Y on the keyboard. But as you can see, that creates a marker with a default name that you have to double click and right, nah, none of that. Don't want to do that. Smarter way, hold down shift and press Y. And that'll bring up the rename dialog right away. So you can then name it and skip all that double clicking nonsense. Uh, gonna call this day one because it's good to keep you know track of our days. That'll come up handy when exporting in a bit. But really quickly, let me just first demonstrate that you can uh, make a, a marker while recording as well. I'm gonna hit asterisk on the numpad. Of love for stories, fantastic, marvelous, and manifestly unreal. And so now while we're recording, I can hit shift Y, type the name, and it will drop the marker where we hit shift Y. So you don't have to be a fast typist or anything. It will just uh, pop it wherever you hit shift Y. So that's that. Now let's pretend this is the end of the first day. I'll create a marker called day two, just because I'm thinking ahead. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down command. And so that will force the smart tool to the range tool because I want to select a range of audio. But instead of, you know, selecting all of this manually, which would be kind of a drag, I'm just going to make a selection and then I'm going to go backwards through our markers. You can do that with these tools down here, uh, but also just shift B and shift N work to uh, go backwards one marker or forwards one marker like that. So I'm just hit shift B until we get back to our day one marker. You might have to shift B through some characters or whatnot. But now if I hold down shift and click here, it will extend the range all the way to uh, the beginning of day one. So we're good to go. If we zoom out, one uh, quick way to do that is click on the ruler up here and just click and drag up. If you go down, it'll zoom in. You can click and drag up to just quickly, you know, fill your screen with what you're looking at to make sure that you're exporting the right thing. Yet yeah, we got everything from day one to day two. So I'm gonna right click down here and select export selection. And then you can just name it whatever you want. 
and hit save and that will save a WAV file that just contains this information. It's not a bounce, so it doesn't apply the stereo pan laws, so we don't lose uh, any gain, which is nice because we're working in 16-bit, so we don't want to um, deliberately lower the gain in any way. So that is markers and exporting in Studio One or Studio One Prime. So one last thing to discuss here real quick is what happens if the talent jumps the punch? What happens if uh, they start speaking right before the actual punch moment. It will sound like that uh, take is bad because the beginning will sound cut off, but actually uh, because we have that option on to record up to five seconds before the actual punch point, that audio will be there. It will be recording that under the hood, and I'll show you how to get that back really quickly. Let me just try to uh, jump the punch real quick. I'll bring up my script, and I'm going to hit the asterisk key on the numpad. Of love for stories fantastic, marvelous, and manifestly unreal. The winged fairies of Grimm and Anderson have brought more happiness to childish hearts than all other human creations. Right, so if you see that, yeah, that's way cut off. If we play that back. Unreal. Winged fairies of Grimm and Anderson. So I, I, you know, I'm missing the and about half of winged. So folks from Cubase and Nuendo backgrounds will recognize this. It's called slip editing. Uh, in Studio One, to do this, you hold down Option and Command on the Mac, or Alt and Control on the PC, and put your cursor in the lower half of this uh, audio event right here, and you'll get this cursor now, which means you can click and drag to the left or right, and the region boundaries will stay the same, but will move the audio within it. And so you can now get back exactly what you were missing. And yeah, if in case the audio then slips past the boundary on this side, you can, uh, you know, just use your cursor, hold it against the edge of the audio vent and drag it out if necessary. So there you go. That's a fixed punch. Unreal. The winged fairies. All right. Uh, one last thing. If you need to get to the help file to get yourself some more help than I've offered here, just go up to help, Studio One reference manual. It's option F1 on the Mac, uh, which would be Alt F1 on the PC, of course. Go here. Uh, some great stuff on, you know, installation setup, fundamentals, pages, recording, editing, uh, the browser, and maybe import export would be all you really need to know to get through recording audiobooks. Uh, you know, none of this will apply. This is all for mixing, mastering a song basically. So that's it. I hope that helps you on beginning your journey to recording audiobooks in Studio One or Studio One Prime for free. All right, thanks. Take care.